what's up how's it going mm, it's garabo yet again in the second part please go check out the previous part to gauge your bearings in the previous part i was basically singing a whole bunch and lamenting against an attempt on my life or attempts quite a myriad of them at that yeah at my life to end me because I bruised some egos. The egos of which upon being bruised don't, don't even realize that the only reason why they feel bruised is because the body of Christ all along has been feeding them with like on a silver platter with a silver spoon in their mouth. Their compromise. The body of Christ has been feeding the occult in South Africa their compromise for years. And so now this church that is Thyatira in South Africa, which is like the church of Thyatira, who has tolerated this woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess all of these fake you know guys like proper in the first part I spoke about Jezebel indeed in that how it is that South Africa is like the the the, the Thyatiran church yeah this cheeky this like Jezebel lady calls herself a prophetess the ch Christians or wannabe Christians the occult is <laughs> running circles around you and even on your head they are dilly dallying playing around dancing they are doing a whole concert. Yeah, yeah, Luna. Do you understand? Out here, meandering in between your hair strands, the way that they're, they're so in your hair like a tick, due to the fact that your churches. Oh, Lord have mercy. Jesus, come down and have mercy on us all. Because herein lies the deal over here. This is a painful point. <laughs> yeah all right listen to this your churches lord have mercy are teeming at the faults with occult pastors who mm, rubbish nonsense for 24 hours do you understand what i'm saying your churches have got occult pastors teeming at the folds undetected as such how are they not undetected it's exactly what i was speaking about in the previous part saying that the way that your churches have got so many people that are practicing witchcraft on wednesday yet they're in church on sunday if at all you were truly born again ain't nobody like that supposed to be able to go through a full sermon without manifesting ain't nobody like only look at the most recent example in jd farah's church jd farah total awesome dude check him out okay recently he was doing a sermon on the rapture to be well that's pretty much like his ministry right he, he's very eschatologically focused and he was giving end times events and whatnot preaching at the pulpit and then somebody was like wow 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 like a quacking duck in the back like somebody was such a screaming manifesting demons because they could not stand the fire in the name of jesus there is power in the name of jesus there is power in the name of jesus to break every chain to break every chain to break every chain there's an army rising up there's an army rising up there's an army rising up to break every chain to break every chain to break every chain there is power in the presence of Jesus, the name of Jesus, the disciples of Christ, in his midst, he will inhabit our praises, O Lord. He inhabits the praises of the saints. Where two or three are gathered, there he's with them. Ain't nobody gonna be able to just hang out, being a demon, and not manifest in the presence of the Son of Man. What? Do you want with us, son of man? That saith the made demons and the man with the legion. That's what's good. That's what happens in the climate of true Christianity. JD Farah Aucha is preaching in a church full of a whole bunch of praying saints. And somebody was like, wah, wah, wee, wah, wah, wee, wah. But that's not happening in your churches. It's not happening. And yet, <laughs> I would know. This is like a thing that happened with me. I was attending churches in the beginning of my walk as a Christian with sometimes people that turned out later on as the Lord would show me through my prophetic gifting were involved in occult magic. They came against my prospects for marriage. They came against my prospects for career. They came against me in so very myriads of fashions in the church that I used to attend. A Baptist church. There was like a whole coven operating inside run by the lead pastor and second in charge to him and it also had sub leaders in the young adults ministry that i was a part of that i was a member like i was part of the young um, adults and so i used to attend those bible studies guys and what like whoa if there's a coven operating and there are people being groomed to you know even become leaders of this cult 
inside this church that is being run and it's a Baptist church where sermons that are similar to those of Charles Spurgeon are being preached as expository like you will find really excellent literature in that environment if a cult could operate in that church what <laughs> I miss brethren I miss brethren I miss Christians ooh, ooh, ooh. no you're not Christian you are you are fluffy I, like, I don't know here in Latter Deal, that same Baptist church, because I was so feverish with Christ, because I was so effervescent, because I was so prayerful, because I was basically dedicating them to God every single day in prayer, I literally fulfilled John 16. Or rather, John 16 was fulfilled in my life. Where it is that those who kicked me out of the church, out of the synagogue, were doing so thinking they're doing a service to God. I got strategically squeezed out of that church because they first tried to handle me by marrying me to one of them that didn't work because i wasn't attracted to the guy and what i was was so taxing that they rather made a decision to like i said they strategically squeezed me out my family were persecuting me i ran to the church for help i cried mm -hmm. they did nothing to eradicate my situation they ignored my cries for help until i felt so abandoned and isolated by them that i just broke away broke away like you know when you're crying to people and they are, they are mum, mum. And they say nothing to hint that we don't care. Get out. That's how that church got rid of me. That's how they got rid of me. Yeah, because I was a real Christian. I was the real deal. I was, I was feverish for God. I was prayerful. So, I mean, just the fact that your churches can be Sunday after Sunday, packed with people coming from all walks of life in South Africa who are mixing Christianity with ancestral worship, mixing Christianity with psychic consultations and clairvoyant consultation and mediums consultation, people who mix Christianity with ghost hunting, people who mix Christianity with necromancy, people who mix Christianity with witchcraft. Every so often they do a Ouija board seance a session. Yeah, with people mixing Christianity with the Sangoma. I don't get that. How do you twala? Twala ring is like carrying like a uh, some entity in order to give you wealth and stuff. How do you twala and still go to church on a Sunday and not manifest? Like, how does that even happen? How do you get involved in such a hard knock, deep, satanic practice and not manifest demons in a church? You should. They should. People that were demon possessed ran to Jesus frantically. They were thrown on the floor with fits. And no, not only because of praise and worship in the middle of singing and so it's a whole bunch of emotionalism they merely just got thrown on the floor because christ approached even without him being an active prayer that is the power of a person that is just oozing the holy spirit is the reason why the world that um hates disciples the, the world around a christian is so persecuting that persecution is a manifestation of entities do you understand more so however when they are in a praying and a fasting stance do they inspire that manifestation and since where two or three are gathered there, Jesus is with us. When then two or three people are fasting. In other words, congregated saints in a church. Yes, like it, guys. Nobody that is involved in the occult should be able to go from 9 a.m. to half past 11 without manifesting. That has recently just seen a sangoma. There shouldn't be any elders among the body of men of God in that church that are using side piece witchcraft that are not manifesting at Bible studies, at church on Sundays. I know of a guy that was made an elder at Grace Bible Church. How in the world was that dude not manifesting demons every single Sunday? How was he, no, how, how was he able to maintain a straight face in that environment? I had a former friend that went with me to Grace. She, she didn't go with me. I went with her because she invited me. New Year's Eve's uh, party, you know, the New, New Year's Eve breaking into the New Year's thing at church. Yeah, she invited me to that at Grace. And she was all up in tongues and everything that night. It went swimmingly. We went home. I slept at, um, we slept at a, a, a mutual friend's house. Went home the next day. That chick turned out to be one of the witches against my life. How was she able to be in church that New Year's Eve from the time we got there in the evening up until we left just shortly after a 1 a.m. in the morning? How was she able to not manifest? How was she not able to not roll down on the ground? Why didn't she fall? Why didn't she manifest? Why? It's because whatever was going on in there was not being responded to by the Holy Spirit of God truly. First of all, this whole rush, she t t t t t her twing twing, praying in a public congregation in tongues despite it being outlawed in God's word. The Lord has no regard or respect for that. So his power is not going to manifest fully and comprehensively in an environment where people are completely ignoring his rules. So all that praying in tongues is like there's demonic tongues being prayed alongside godly tongues and they're just clashing with each other. 
so people are not going to manifest because it's a spiritual war in the sky that is being able that it is like the entities of darkness in that space can stand the entities in that darkness can stand in that climate because of that disobedience obedience is better than sacrifice because of that disobedience entities can stand so that chick was able to stand from the moment we got to church all the way up until the end the other church was prayerless the baptist one it was prayerless it was prayerless it was not as prayerful as prayerfulness should be a church that prays conquers do you understand coupled with the fact that they they just there were so many other things they were kind of stoic uh weird kind of rigid in the way that they were rhema grace jokes jokes do you understand like the churches that you are attending every single sunday the fact that there are so many people from like i said all different kinds of walks walks of life in south africa working in corporates they're teachers in schools they're this and they're that but they mix their christianity with all different kinds of weird stuff mm. They should not be able to just raise their hands. I mean, I remember back when I was still attending Rayma. I saw this one at the time she was my friend, right? Be but right now, I ain't got no friends anymore. She was one of my girls. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I saw her. I saw her. Like, I, I knew that she was in church that morning because Rayma's like a mega church, right? Her hands were like up in the sky and her eyes were all closed and stuff. Oh, God is able, lift it up. She defeated the grave. And she she looked so emo. She looked like she could even like, you know, totally cry. And I saw her because I get what you know, in mega churches, they've got cameras and all different kinds of, you know, um, expensive equipment and what have you that, that can like, you know, basically just zoning on a person, almost like being at a stadium and then next thing you're sitting there cheering for the match and your face is like, the whole stadium sees you type thing yeah something like that this chick's face was on the, the 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 screens in front and i was like oh that's my friend yeah at the time i didn't think anything of it and she was like all like in i don't even think she saw herself being shown on the screen she was just like and her eyes were like she was just like yeah my god is able <laughs> yeah practically like close to tears yeah she was one of the people that put witchcraft on me like that, that level of circus, that level of circus inside churches. Give me lawyer, you that chick. She came against my marriage prospects and career, both. How is somebody involved in that level of sorcery out here? My <laughs> oh, on Sundays, these people praise me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Thus saith the Bible, thus saith therefore the Lord. Mm. Praising God with their lips, even with their drana and their snot and everything. But they don't know God from a bar of soap because on Tuesday evening, they have a meeting with a Sangoma in Bryanston. That's what's good. To go and decimate the life of, listen to this, another professing Christian. Like, I was a Christian at the time. I, like, known so. Known so. Like, observably so. Like, people knew that I had converted my life over to God. And this chick goes to a Sangoma to bewitch a saint. By this man will know that you're my disciples. Love one another love one another by this man will also know that you're my disciples keep my commandments obey my commandments and among god's precepts many of them is that touch what, what is this um uh, let it, no one among you interpret omens no sorcery no witchcraft nobody should walk through the fire or anything like just strange occult stuff like y'all shouldn't be doing any of that yeah so if uh, if at all you're walking in that stuff you don't know god is that basic mm. but here it is that a person is not loving me because i mean goodness why why is it love when you're taking away my husband well, when you're taking away my my, uh, my my career, honey, as a Christian, you are displaying that you are not my my sister. You are displaying that you're not my sister. That's what's good. But you're in church. You see, that chick should not have been able to write out an entire church session, given the demon possession that inevitably comes with people that are dabbling in dark arts. She, she should not have been able to, to write that out. Yeah, but she was able to. Why? Because, you know, yeah, in the last days, people will not be able to endure sound doctrines. So they will gather for themselves a great number of teachers to teach them what the itching is want to hear. Therefore, in churches, there are going to be, never mind a whole bunch of lukewarm Christians out here practicing witchcraft in the church, but the pastor is also going to be a devil worshiper. Mm. The pastor too is also never going to manifest in his own church, thanks to the prayers of true saints. That's why these fake pastors, especially within the charismatic spaces, love to smack all of y'all with approval for resha tatarishim twing twing karum in a public congregation they love tongues these unregulated uninterpreted tongues they love them because it's almost like it's a it's some kind of a, a defense strategy do you understand what i'm saying in the kingdom of darkness against true christians they're in because you don't know what these people are saying 
cannot be interpreted there's no edification going on over there it could be demonic tongues it could be incantations and so there is an actual spiritual war happening in the cosmos and given the climate of disobedience by christians in that environment the lord is not going to deliver them anyway the lord is not going to basically rock up and, and fight the darkness out of there when christians are walking in active disobedience it's written in uh god's word concerning the um balaam's era in the book of jude it's similar as well to the one written of in the letter to in the letter to the church at Thyatira, where it is that Jezebel caused the people of God to eat food sacrificed to idols and to also partake in sexual immorality, and also in the letter to the church at Pergamum, where it is that um, people were were taught to eat food sacrificed to idols. I think that the, also in Pergamum that happens where Satan has his throne, right? And like I said, in the book of uh, Jude as well, Balaam's era, how it is that that whole thing happened, how it, it prospered, it was because they they uh, took. God's people that could not be cursed. I get a Balaam was the dude with the donkey that got rebuked by the donkey. You will remember that story if at all you've read the scriptures, right? Mm. Balaam was the dude that got spoken to by a donkey because he was trying to curse those whom God has blessed. And so when a donkey would not move ahead, he was brutaling the donkey, hurting, essentially scourging the donkey on some move, move, move. And the donkey ultimately literally was given a voice, a mouth to speak by God. And it said, why are you afflicting me? Because my goodness, like, whoa, right? You can't curse those whom God has blessed. And you can't bless those whom God has blessed. Uh, you can't bless those whom God has cursed. And it appeared that this donkey was seeing an angel in the road because Balaam was en route going to go and curse God's people. Ultimately, the guy was given counsel or he was the one that gave counsel rather to educate the people of God to eat sa food sacrificed to idols and to partake in sexual immorality. And upon doing that, then only was able to prosper to pronounce a curse on the people of Israel. So therefore, when Christians walk in active disobedience, that's when it is possible to be cursed. When you disregard the precepts of God, when you ignore what the Lord has to say about how to conduct your life, that's when you can be cursed. So Christians, genuine ones at that chilling inside these big mega churches, out here tolerating fake pastors speaking smack at the pulpit because you are not Berean, you're not studying the scriptures, you are not verifying what is written in God's word against what it is that is being spoken at the pulpit. You're sitting, you're writing it out. And you are being made to live these compromised carnal lives where you are also lovers of money for crying out loud. And so therefore you're cursable. When you as a Christian having conviction that this is wrong in a public congregation according to the scriptures. But then they're doing it anyway and you just run with it anyway. On that day you're so compromised that you can easily be cursed. You can easily be cursed. So I believe one of the biggest reasons why these fake pastors that have got occult powers love tongues so much. All over the show. Is because those tongues are similar to incantations in especially those who are devil worshipping in the body not in the body of christ amidst the body of christ the tears among the wheat they are pronouncing incantations and they are successfully pressing to a corner and a pulp the believers they're in why because why are you walking in this flagrant disobedience because the scriptures make it clear what makes for orderly worship you are getting conquered because you are in disobedience in active disobedience so your christianity is being you're being made, you're watered down. That's what I'm getting at. You're watered down in the worst way. And so they're getting to you. It is not that the Lord is not coming through for you, that the Lord is not picking up your weight on your behalf. It is not that the Lord is, is faithless now to the church or that Christ uh, appears to be distant. No, the Lord inhabits the praises of the saints, but the Lord will not leave any sin unpunished. Plus the Lord, it is clear in his word that one of the things that can get to you as a believer is compromise against him. It makes you curseable. Do you understand what I'm saying? So now you've been cursed in churches. You are riding out Amazon or churches. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Where even pastors are members of the occult. They're Freemasons. They have gotten powers through satanic spirits. You have tolerated that. South Africa, you are thoroughly just like the church at Thyatira. And that's why these people are coming at me with a boot print, literally trying to land it on my face because they think I'm grabbable. I'm gettable. They think I'm grabbable and gettable because they were, you were grabbable and you were gettable. They have been spoiled by the observation of your curseability. And so they think that the true warriors in the kingdom of heaven, those that have made themselves clean, washed their garments and are vessels of honor. Those that are soldiers awake in the battlefield. They think they can get to us. And now they, 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 uh, they are, of course, taken aback by what is our mutant powers. We're like Wolverine. We keep on regenerating. We are like mystique. We've got so many talents. We have got mutant powers. And they acknowledge that. They admit that we are strong, but they don't admit that we are walking in the power, capital T. They just imagine we're just a tough stain, like I said in the first part. 
due to the fact that you have been brought to the ground. You are literally lukewarm Christians responsible for the mutiny against the true body of Christ. The war, the battlefield that you, the battlefield, sorry, that you have put all of us in has been made ever more effervescent, feverish, fiery, hot. Do you understand? Because of your compromise, your settling has made the occult not give up where we're concerned. Never mind giving up, but repent. They refuse to repent because they think that we're on equal playing grounds with them. They think this is Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. They think that it's like two witches fighting. It's just that one warlock or one witch is stronger than the other. And this here could go in any direction depending on who has got more power for the day. They thoroughly think that they're on equal playing ground with other Christians. They think that Christians are like the tenement of Harry Potter and they are Voldemort. They are the, the evil side of this like um, power from another realm. And so thinking that we're on equal playing ground, they don't down tools. They keep trying and trying. But that's the sad thing about it is it's not Harry Potter and, and, and the Philosopher's Stone or the Goblet of Fire. No, no, no. This year is the kingdom of heaven. The citizens of which are seated in heavenly places with the man Christ Jesus. They cannot be conquered. They trample on serpents and scorpions and of all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means harm them. They belong, however, to a God who is slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, not willing that any be should perish, but that all should come to a knowledge of him. So he is staying his hand from finishing them off hastily. However, once his decision has finally been reached to obliterate them due to the attrition that they have placed the church under, that's when they start to die. It's funeral. It's giving R.I.P. cadaver. It's got cold bed vibes and autopsy. This here is the end of the lives of the occult. That's what happens when you keep on insisting that Karabo is Harry Potter and you're Voldemort. Do you understand what I'm saying? You eventually die. You die. But the death of those unbelievers having held fast to the occult magic the way that they held fast to it. Frankly, their blood is on the hands of these lackluster, flaccid, lukewarm, seeker-sensitive rando, absolutely indiscriminately shooting themselves in the foot, wannabe Christians that have made the occult dilly-dally dance around, play the ghetto on the heads of what would be the proverbial body of Christ. It's not really the body of Christ. The true body of Christ, you go know them because you will know them by their fruit. Do you understand what I'm saying? But they're so sparsely scattered and few and far between, so rare to find, seeing as the road is narrow, that leads to life that few people find, that once you encounter one, you anticipate that we must, of course, duh, be just like whoever it is that you knocked down like a domino back in the day, so you keep trying. They keep trying, and it is this endeavor of theirs, these perpetual attempts at our lives, that, um, yeah, I get, they, they get killed. They get killed, but their blood is on your hands. They, they get killed. They just get knocked down. God will have stayed his hand from finishing them off out of grace. He will have allowed them to make an observation of a Christian, true Christian's life that they might be given conviction that there is a difference with true believers versus everybody else that's playing Black Man Patile in the church because it's games. Whatever, right? Mm. God will give them a season of time to observe the obvious power of the Christian. They will observe the obvious Mount Carmel miracle that is being performed by these Christians, proving that God is God. But like Jezebel, a lot of them, a lot of them, because of the fluffiness of indeed God's people, the, 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 the unpreparedness of God's people to actually stand on the truth of God, mm, it's what causes a pump in Jezebel. Jezebel could have easily been cooed by all of Israel if they were faithful. She could have just been hostile, taken over. They could have staged a state capture. They could have just gotten rid of her and Ahab and put another king in in that place. If at all the people of God wanted to be truly godly, the Lord would have organized for them to be to basically have a replacement king and a replacement queen. But it was their lackluster disposition, their unpreparedness to be truly consecrated to God, their willingness to s settle for Baal worship and all that idolatry that made Jezebel pompous. That made it made Jezebel so pompous that when then Elijah proved that God was God, instead of repenting, just like these people in the occult are doing right now, instead of repenting, she is Archer pronouncing, May the gods deal with me ever so severely. If by this time tomorrow, Elijah is not a dead man, dead. Yeah, that, that's Jezebel. Girl, you've just had somebody prove that God is God. Why are you holding on to an idol? Yeah, because I have so far prospered to bully all of God's people. That's why. When they succeed to bully you, they make the lives of true saints a living nightmare until we're living in the wilderness, having to be comforted that there are 7,000 others, others that have not knelt to bail and having to be um, musical chairs, like, you know, like swung around pendulously from house to house out you're moving from the wilderness and then next thing you're at the widow at Zarephath because you always have to be that dude that's on flight, that's in flight. You always have to be in flight because you're running away from some rando that 
just will not repent despite being proven to that they're on hot water it's not that the occult is unaware of the power of god that they observe in true christians it's that they think we can be gotten to because of fake christians because of the lukewarm church because of the ones that have been settling they're saying you guys you look proper you sit in churches the fact that you can go to church every single sunday and go home without a single manifestation when these churches are so full of like half-time witches yeah as law as well as a pastor also being half-time witch those people are not manifesting because that's a circus like i said black man party no no black man party no no get there it's 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 hopscotch it's tag you're it okay it's gusha but it's a game it's a kitty's game it's hopscotch kitty get though i don't know what's going on in churches but it ain't church and because people are playing in ghetto inside the brick and mortar structure there is no power in christianity being exuded neither felt by the occult until they meet one scattered christian because she's been sh scattered by false shepherds that scatter sheep and then they banned like little cowards many of them against that one believer one believer women you've been getting taken christian women really inverted commas by occult men left right and center ban shang i'm a corolla like ban yo guys yes like it they are taking you tsunami wanna be christian men are out here being listened by jezebel women that were in the church for five seconds whole bunch of witchcraft being practiced do you understand and they're out here getting married to unbelieving people getting unequally yoked only to be miserable in marriages later on why is that even happening it's because you're fluffy and not only are you fluffy you are giving bravado to king kong like i said in the previous part that's bashing his chest on a mountain top saying that me i can get any woman i want including one that does not want someone that is not a christian i prosper to go and corobella a christian woman now today she's my wife who are you garabo to come tell me different yeah exactly they they thoroughly feel entitled to me and they think that one day it's gonna happen and seeing as i have emasculated them by simply telling it like it is it was not my intention to emasculate it's not a uh, the door it's not a it's not god's daughter's prerogative to emasculate men i was just to honor and respect them but when a man is a flagrant unbeliever are you coming with a boot print trying to force marry you when he is a hater of the cross an enemy of the cross you're going to do everything in your power to demolish that argument and that lofty pretension, that lofty imagination that is trying to exalt itself above the Most High. And you will hold every thought captive to the obedience of Jesus Christ. You will reject him. And that rejection is received as emasculation. That rejection is regarded as ego bruising. It's men that have a delusion of grandeur about their awesomeness. They have aggrandized themselves. And so no one is supposed to say no to them because no one has so far. And when you keep saying no and they are desperate to have you, they then graduate to homicide because they've been trained by the fake body of Christ that they get given everything they want on a silver platter. You've made our lives a living nightmare. You have created a tumultuous, turbulent, feverish war that is being fought by a scant number of laborers that are few, even though the harvest is plentiful. And we are getting exasperated and worn out and seeing as... The Lord will not allow us to be tempted beyond that which we are able. Ultimately, this is going to culminate in the rapture. Just the fact that, just the fact that y'all can sit under fake pastors and not pick it up for what they, for what they are, for what it is. Just the fact that you can write out sermons talking about nothing but money. Today, I was listening to All Things Theology. This guy um, on YouTube that I follow and he was covering Passion Java. I, I've, I've heard in the Christian annals about this random flagrant false prophet dude. Um, and however, I have not really listened to him preach or be apologetically discussed by any Christian because I just basically took their word for it and avoided him. And also his affiliation to Prophet Lovi is what made me avoid him. Prophet Lovi is the one that I have entered into my own personal apologetics to basically dis disband what he is type setup thing so when i learned that he was affiliated with prophet lovi and was even at prophet lovi's second wedding a uh, type establishment thing to a second woman let's just put that out there while the other woman is still alive um i wrote him off but something today made me decide to watch all things theology as he was covering passion java because i had to pass time uh while one of my videos was was exporting and as you guys i was out of my mind just shocked I was shocked when this guy was doing this um expose if you want to call it that i was shocked at 
the audience what killed me was the audience it was the audience the people in his church in in atlanta america that's where he was resident uh, not resident sorry but what i wanted to say but he was a guest right was he's a guest i believe passion java has also been to south africa right i don't know what his nationality is but i don't think he's south african just based on his accent okay this guy um i was i was i was literally out of my mind shocked at the approval the concerted joy and agreement that these people were in when he was preaching the amens the standing the closing of the eyes the crying oh my goodness what get yeah, what got me the most was the crying the people who you would see as the camera is panning to them with like you know tissues out you wiping their eyes like what why are you crying why why are you amening this rando it is so bizarre to watch but that's just the thing about uh, you know biblical prophetic fulfillment these things you you know that they're gonna happen the bible says they're gonna happen but you know easier said than done or rather easier read than experienced easier read than experienced it's just always really hard it's like needles coming into your eyes and bursting into shards while in your eyes the way that it's so painful to watch it's just absolutely painful to watch despite it having been predicted in scripture the bible did make it clear that people in the last days are going to be lovers of self and lovers of money that their god is going to be their belly and they're going to glory and shame that they will gather for themselves a great number of teachers to teach them what the itching ears want to hear because they will not endure sound doctrine and that god is going to hand them over to a reprobate mind and that they're going to make up the grand majority that there's going to be a great apostasy that people are going to fall away from the faith depart from the faith give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons yeah these things was, were prophesied they were spoken in the scriptures in advance that when they happen we may believe but like i said it is easier read in the bible than experienced so like i said shards of needles just popping breaking burning even hot with like molten lavic type heat in my eyes as i was watching this i could not believe my eyes could not believe my heart my all my senses frankly that which i was receiving the ears the sound the rotten sermon wannabe sermon i don't know what you want to call it i don't think it should be called a sermon but this dude can do nothing but talk about money like and he his his uh division of god's word is just a preposterous to say the least do you understand what i'm saying and uh, but never mind even just his preposterous division of god's word just the fact that he speaks about nothing but money at the pulpit even if he was well spoken and able to partially deceive in his way of using scripture the way that prophet lovi is nonetheless just the constant conversation about nothing but money an acquisition of things 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 and no true leading of a person to jesus and uh, the recognition of who he is learning of who he is his, uh, his attributes and all that jazz that for me what ought to be the thing that when you're sitting in an audience are just seeking god as a, a professing christian you you should have some kind of concern in your body when a person is talking about nothing but you're gonna get money goodness go to a conference that's gonna motivate you on 10 steps on how to build wealth there are so many motivational speakers doing that but don't go to church to find that for crying out loud do not go to church to find that if you're trying to be an entrepreneur go to an entrepreneur's conference go to a roadshow for business men and women there the lord is not gonna judge you for being in that environment trying to buy the sort of your brow work that you might earn a, your keep on earth do you understand what i'm saying but like when you go to church to get advice on that on how to be a successful entrepreneur you're not in church you're, you are not in church and why people sitting inside churches are not grieved why they are not grieved by that kind of sermon at the pulpit why it's not doing something in them that's making them very super duper califragy xbl docious uncomfortable is it's not so much beyond me but it is still passing like i said this stuff has been predicted in the scriptures it's been prophesied but it's easier read than experienced it's much easier to read it in the bible and see that oh this is gonna happen hear about it here read all about it read all about it oh 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 it's 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 nice to read the word of god but like it's real rough to experience it happen to watch it unfold on the earth just like in john 15 it's written that the world hates disciples mark 10 that you're gonna you might have to lose fields and everything for the sake of the kingdom of heaven and you will gain a hundredfold over that which you've lost with persecutions and in this life eternal life and in in the next life sorry uh, eternal life when, when when the scriptures make it clear that you are gonna suffer in this world you're gonna have much trouble but take heart of overcome the world the beatitudes blessed are the persecuted it's easier read than experienced you know what to expect you count the cost of being a disciple but then when you do go through the suffering you grumble i would know i endure it i i grumble so much against god i complain i complain even though he warned me from the get-go 
you are gonna suffer in this world you're gonna have much trouble take heart i've overcome the world the world hates disciples from now on the day's gonna come when those who kill you will thinking will, will do so thinking they're doing a service to god from now on your enemies are going to be members of your own household you might lose fields mothers homes brothers sisters etc if you keep if, if you lose your life for my sake lose your life i don't eat suffer you will gain it all that jazz like i'm out here reading the scriptures like 13 years ago when i'm born again newly and i'm like yeah 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 i'm ready i'm ready yo now that i'm in the middle of the battle yes like it but it's rough and never mind is it rough but i also have got qualms with what i'm going through i've got major qualms with it i've got problems with it i am unhappy with the suffering i hate it i absolutely hate it and i hate it so much and i'm so grieved by it and i've got such heavy qualms with it i'm so upset and afflicted by it that every so often i even grumble to god about that which he warned me would happen but thank God that he remains faithful when I'm faithless for he cannot deny himself and thank God that he remembers that I am made of dust and so therefore he has compassion on me because if it wasn't for his compassion he would have thrown me away long ago for how much I lament about that which he told me would happen so if at all with persecution it's easier read in the scriptures and anticipated than actually experienced um then of course you can anticipate that even with the great apostasy even though it's hard to watch like shards breaking in your eyes causing you bloody tears yeah that's what's good it, it, the lord said it would happen but it's still it, 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 knowing about it does not make it grieve any less having foreseen it or forewarned having been forewarned about it does not make it any less gangster to look at like it's just so cringeworthy to listen to passion java speak and not only that but watch some crazy woman out here dropping a tear about with what he's saying looking all emotionally moved it's like why are you crying this dude is a flagrant heretic like season does this get out of their fleet get out of her my people let's should partake in her place but nah they're celebrating they're standing back to people that are out here. amen amen what what are you amening but you know i gotta well, stop complaining because god did say this stuff would happen if it grieves you get out it grieves it like it grieved me so much like so much like so that, that's why H guys yeah no I, I i false preachers even in apologetics i can't watch i can't watch even when when christians are basically just ripping apart their false doctrines i struggle to write them out oh my god for that super duper califragilisticexpialidocious grieving is my thought like i i listen every so often to people covering his stuff but i cringe so badly that sometimes i even click away from the video of a brother or a sister that is just uh, revealing or unfolding this rubbish that's going on they are honestly partaking in apologetics calling out the immoral man from among us exposing false preachers and not um partaking in the fruitless deeds of darkness but rather exposing them they're doing what is right but it's so cringeworthy it's so cringe feasty that i can't write out even the apologetics i can't listen to them they're rough to listen to maybe it's because my life sucks so badly in Jeff just generally but what's, what's especially grieving and so therefore i just I can't take anymore but well, what's especially grieving is the audiences for me it's the audiences because a lot of times these pastors that mess with with with, people, with congregants lives like they exploit people they hurt people right that's what's good they scatter sheep they they are worthless shepherds they're clouds without rain like it's written in the book of jude right yeah like sons of disobedience that's what they are type establishment thing you are tempted as a result of them being obviously in a position of leadership and so therefore um the blame accrues to them they are accountable for that blame you are tempted on that day to imagine these uh audiences of theirs as victims for the larger majority you, you you just look at them as these victims of this like scattering shepherd that this cloud without rain you, you want to just point fingers at this nasty this rando but yeah the bible makes it clear that like look you are accountable right you have got to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling you gotta be berean you gotta count the cost of being a disciple in your own un unique individual capacity you have got to seek the lord for yourself and therefore find so people are responsible for their own unique situation while a good shepherd goes a long way all right to disciple and all that jazz bottom line is you are accountable for your own relationship with god and you have got to stand before him and account for all that which you did when you were roaming these streets coupled with the fact that god did make it clear that in the last days people are going to be so crazy debased that they are in they they not their pastors not their random shepherds not these clouds without rain but they are going to be the ones that are not going to endure sound doctrine and they are going to be the ones that have got these itching ears gathering for themselves therefore passion java
they are the ones that are going to depart from the faith and give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. They are going to be the ones that insist on worshipping the creation instead of the creator. They are the ones that are not going to love the truth and take pleasure in their unrighteousness. And so God is going to hand them over to their reprobate mind, to a strong delusion. Like it's written in 2 Thessalonians 2. They, they, so, no, they're not victims. Their shepherds suck and they will be beaten with many more blows than these goats down below. But these goats are also individually very uniquely responsible for their own situation. And they did not take care of it. They did not look out for themselves. That's what's good. That's what's good. People like me, frankly, are going to be a mantle, some kind of a monument used as an example for what in the world under heaven happens when you seriously take the Bible even though you don't have a reliable discipling shepherd and a reliable body of believers that are going to love you uh, and with whom you will fellowship, you are responsible to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Here it is that I've stayed fast with God despite all the solitude and isolation all of these years. I have prospered to stand fast in God in a Berean disposition. Gilly one, I will be a monument and people like me will be a monument to those that told them that they basically will try to say to Jesus, but like my pastor, but like my uh, Bible study leader, but like my deacon, but like, yeah, you don't get to blame them. So they are also to blame. And that's why it's especially cringeworthy. That's why it's especially a feast of cringiness. Why? Because they are happy to be under such rubbish understanding. They are happy to be sitting under these random men and women that are not supposed to be preaching, even in the slightest. They're not supposed to be standing in any position to serve in serving and giving the word of the lord the women pastors as well there's just so many problems going on on earth a disregard comprehensive one at that of the sealed canon of scripture that is this word lana and in my particular country that is South africa i will say this time and time again please i'm not a preacher i am an evangelist i am a youtuber i am you get my point i would never stand in front of men and preach i know what god has to say plus i have a prophetic gifting and so i prophesy every so often what is it the lord has shown me and women in the scriptures have been known to do that so i have to keep on correcting that so people do not mistake me for the tantamount of a woman pastor that is not what i'm about that's not what i'm doing i would never ever lead men like in an overt open capacity where i'm out here chilling in front of a church and teaching like i thoroughly respect the scriptures obedience is better than sacrifice that's what i'm getting at people need to obey god because when you don't you find yourself in a cursible state now let's move past that place okay this situation then where it is that these people are gathering for themselves south africa that is Thyatira. you're gathering for yourself even fake pastors like passion java is always in south africa all right there was a time when bushiri was always in South Africa, but he underwent some kind of an inquiry that left him, frankly, uh, left a lot to be desired about him and made him found too, that ought have caused a whole bunch of people in the body of Christ to find him wanting, but nonetheless, they still supported their papa. They call them papa. They always call them papa. And uh, you know, guys, like, you know, when, when the Bible is just so, hey, guys, people are going to spend eternity with obviousnesses that eluded them, just ruminating in their mind on a loop as they burn in hell. Like Christ said, call no one father, but the, uh, call no one Abba, but the one above. And there are all these prophets all over Africa. And now they're chilling in America too. Being called Baba, it's a flagrant blasphemy. I don't know why you don't see that it's, it's an occult ritual. It's a flagrant blasphemy. It is a dis, it's a comprehensive, insistent, insistence on ignoring God's word. That's why I said even earlier that they love public tongues in a, a tongues in a public congregation where there's no interpreter. It's a complete ignoring of scripture, taking for granted that you will tolerate that woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess. And in this instance, it's already a woman, but a man, like a prophet, Speak a person calling themselves a prophet. And yet they are approving of these public tongues. They are approving of being called Baba. Why, what is it with them being called Baba? What is it with that? Being called Daddy. Do you not realize that Christ said that no one is to be called Daddy or Baba, but the Father in heaven? Don't call anybody Abba. And these people are called Abba in churches. The Catholic Church's whole pro like era as well is in that. After calling mere mortal men, Father, Father, it's been three days since my last confession. I have sinned, blah, blah, blah. Confessing your sins to a mere mortal. When Christ is our only intercessor, he is the only mediator between God and man. And yet Catholic priests are able to intercede on behalf. Uh, not intercede, what is this? Um, Yeah, well, intercede. Yeah, on behalf of uh, like God, deity. They've, they made, they call themselves vicars of Christ. It's problematic. Do you understand what I'm saying? So a similar model to the Catholic Church is also dwelling in these many prophets all over the show. 
who insist on being called papa like the moment you walk into a church and a man is being called papa prophesy prophesy papa prophesy prophesy papa all over these streets it's a pomp it's an arrogant it's it's a it's an arrogance it is a deistic environment where it is that a mere mortal has been deified he has been anointed with a status of deity within the occult and the thing that gives him this pump and this bravado and this like aggrand uh, this aggrandized general disposition um is sorry is the fact that they basically called him the father in their ritual that's why they get so arrogant they they, they they're made to wear a pride they're like satan their father has made them just like him who tried to exalt himself above the stars of heaven and be like god he will basically just an attempt to coo god you ought to see just how vapid this stuff is you guys you you should see it it's empty it's vacuous it has no real rooting in scripture and yet these people come out of these occult rituals obviously where it is that they've been anointed by some satanic high priest to be god just like satan wanted to be god and the emulation of their deified state their because uh, they're deists they're deists in the worst way they believe they're gods right the emulation of it is in the fact that they are called god in a way that people can't perceive and i don't know why they don't perceive it because the scriptures are clear they are called abba they are called abba prophet lovi is called abba passion java is called abba bushiri was called is called abba where he's now in south africa he doesn't come anymore because of that inquiry after the what after what happened in his church and then people died what have you yeah um the late tb joshua was called abba you, you need to understand they they are all called papa they they, they is a, it's a ritual it's a, a sect it's a it's a coven a cult it's 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 the way that they get in like given these powers these prophetic powers they are given the status of deity and a way for them to constantly get awarded worship so that people could be walking in a perpetual idolatry is to have these people call them father papa people should be able to see that in the bible that there is a an era they are blasphemy so south africa your churches are teeming at the falls with little papas La barata, you are besotted with bushiri and people like him tranketi is another one you know that tranketi guy there was a time when i was following him on uh on tiktok ignorantly but ultimately i always break uh, these guys I, I i get divorced from them because i wake up to realize because one of like they're heretical but you see just like with levin it's a little leaven that leavens the lump so every so often you will meet with one video that they do that listening to it from beginning to end there's nothing in there that you can pick up that's that's off do you understand what i'm saying because they always have got to have a majority christian sounding message and then they infiltrate destructive heresies and doctrines of demons they're in right so i listened to that tranquility guys i forgot what his first name is but you know his surname is tranquility yeah I, I listened to on tiktok when i was still on tiktok some years ago i i, I don't I, I don't um interact with that application anymore yeah type setup thing i listened to a video where t um this tranquility dude was explaining s how to know that witchcraft is an operation in your life and i listened i clicked on it because i am dealing with a whole bunch of sorcery and many of the points that he covered were accurate right uh, to what i was experiencing and i kept on nodding so i decided to follow him and then of course because i decided to follow him on tiktok uh, i got many more recommendations of him and it was upon getting many more recommendations of him that i started to like concern you know as to the stuff that he was listening to and something made me go in his tiktok page like his his actual page right instead of just merely getting the recommendations on the feed uh, on the for you page guys this guy has got millions of followers and he follows no one no one i mean how much arrogance do you have to have to have millions of followers and you don't follow even your wife there is an arrogance in that it's a pump like he literally has got zero people that he's following while he has got millions of people following him he's basically saying everybody watch me i don't watch anyone i, I just rock up here to dump content on tiktok and every so often i scroll on some videos but i will not follow anybody that that general that thing what was a big warning sign in Jefela for myself for me that, that was the first warning who in the world as a christian has got content creator has got followers but doesn't follow anyone like i will give you an example there are these channels that i keep on watching on um on youtube that speak to each other uh, a lot like gospel for christ ministries with um is it john henry and uh vision sealed and brylin briggs 
uh, Alan Parr, etc. Right? Recently, there was this like Okima Bob that was that's I was just speaking smack about a whole bunch of these content creators that I have been listening to for years. All right, and for the first time. I, I did not follow these people because they recommended each other. I just followed them because I like their content. And, but I just so happened to find out that they follow each other. How did I find out? Because some dude called... Uh, some some dude was uh, just like speaking smack about them. Some Joe whatever guy. I, I forgot his name. Okay. Um, some dude that was just speaking about brothers in the faith who are sound. Like they ain't jack. Like they don't follow their channels. And they all covered a similar story type setup thing and then i came to learn from from john henry's channel that he follows who is this guy he follows mike winger he follows brylan riggs he follows uh uh who is this guy who is this uh, the, the black dude uh alan parr I, I came to learn that they've been they follow each other and have been following each other for years now uh because of that one video that that one dude that was out dissing all the brothers of the faith yeah they all not all of them did response videos but i watched a couple of their response videos and then i realized which oh you know uh mike winger follows brylan wait uh, brylan riggs oh um john henry follows vision sealed oh 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 right i was like oh okay th this is refreshing to to uh, know that these people follow each other uh, it makes you realize that wow well, even when you've got like a big fat chunky youtube channel you're humble enough to follow someone that is similar to you or that is a brother or a sister in the faith that you follow the mindset of right the the doctrine of you're cool with them um, I, I, I spoke that whole story to help you understand that a man like uh, who's this John Henry has got a channel as right now his channel has got something like 700 and something thousand subscribers like he's got quite a big channel right he's headed to 1 million subscribers he's a big big um content creator but he does have people that he in and of himself follows I don't know how many on YouTube you, you don't really get told who you follow just like on TikTok you can see who you how many you follow versus how many follow you and Instagram also does that, but YouTube doesn't give you that um, ratio, right? But just based on that video, where it is that they were complaining about that one dude that was um, speaking smack about all of them. Yeah, I came to learn that these people have other people that they follow. These people have other people that they follow. I also, I'm a very small channel, right? And there was a day when I got followed I got subscribed to by somebody that had 30,000 subscribers and has a Christian channel. I was I was like pleasantly surprised that, whoa, somebody with 30,000 subscribers is, is, has, has subscribed to me. And at the time, I had like 400 subscribers on that channel. So I was very, very pleasantly surprised to be followed by someone with that many um, subscribers, right? Uh, type setup thing. Also, I have been followed on TikTok by B.I. Pagati this dude in south africa that like gives money to people on the street and what have you i followed him and then one day i came to learn that we are friends on tiktok that basically means that he follows me back and i'm a very small content creator so i was like whoa a dude that has got like bi has got millions of subscribers on tiktok not subscribers but followers on tiktok right and i came to learn that he follows me back on tiktok but i, I left tiktok and what have you so it doesn't really matter so he found my content and a man that big uh, that gargantuan that huge can humble himself enough to follow somebody that has got just 300 followers that has got just 300 followers with you having millions yeah that shows a person that is a child of god that displays somebody that is a servant of the living god this dude who claims to be a christian utrankedi literally has got millions of followers on tiktok and he follows nobody that is an arrogance that is a pump and a pride do you understand what i'm saying that tends to be awarded these people that get ceremonial uh, ceremoniously uh awarded the status of deity in occult rituals occult rituals and Tranchetti, his church the stuff that he does over there the activity they're in the circus acts the theatrics in that environment are very similar to the theatrics of Bushiri. They're similar to the theatrics of Prophet Lovi. They're similar to the theatrics of Java, Passion Java. They're similar to the theatrics of many of these preachers and pastors strewn across Africa largely. But now they are popping up all over the US and Europe and what have you mm, that are being called Papa. So you can see that there is a grain of pomp and arrogance in that environment. There's a lot of vainglory therein. And people are happy to follow somebody like that. Why are you not creasing your forehead? Why your little papa is not following anybody that is Christian? Including other papas. Including other prophets. Including 
I mean, goodness, he should at least follow Java, at least follow Lofi, at least, but he ain't even, he's, he's telling himself, Uti, me, I'm too special, I'm too legit to quit, I'm MC Ham, I can't touch this, yeah, to follow anybody, so I will have no one that I follow, but everybody's gonna follow me. Is he not, on that day, a little Jesus? He, like, proper, he's a little messiah, because Christ don't follow nobody, we all follow him, we all follow Jesus, and Jesus does not follow any one of us. Him and the Father are one. They're equal. Do you understand? The Father awards authority to Jesus Christ. One God, three persons. There is headship within the Trinity in the sense that it is God, but it's one person, three persons. Sorry, it is one God, three persons. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's what's going on over there. So the Lord has, the Father has vested honor and authority on Christ to have all of us as an inheritance for his own possession. So we all follow the father we all follow the son because there's nobody that gets to the father but through the son do you understand that that's just how this whole thing works first angela mm. so when then as a mere mortal preacher pastor prophet dude you make like jesus on tiktok where all of the south africa all of these millions of south africans all of these millions of Zimbabweans and Ghanaians and nigerians largely africans and then maybe some deceived americans and europeans Australians, etc. All of these people that are following you on TikTok have followed you the way that Christ is to be followed. Him and him only. Christ onlyism. And Jesus don't gotta be tailing you. Christ does not follow you. Christ does not worship you. Christ has your back, but he's not following you. He stands at your door and knocks because he is calling you to follow him. That's how it is that it happens. And we've got a man on TikTok out here with zero followers. Sorry, with, with zero following and get so many followers and he doesn't even follow listen to this his own wife he does not even follow his wife his wife he does not even follow umfaz guys and we are the bride of christ and christ does not follow us there is just so much self-deification going on in these people's lives but like they're the ones that you have encircled yourselves with and called papa they're the ones that you are writing out stupid sermons about nothing but a bentley and a lamborghini <laughs> I saw assured by by Java. This dude does nothing but apologetics. The one who's all things theology, KBD True. He used to have the name KBD True. Once upon a time, I've been subscribed to him ever since the days when he was still KDB True. Type setup thing. Anyway, yeah, uh, he does shorts too. Where it is that he shows Java. <laughs> uh, I, I love. That's actually the only reason I watched um his video on exp like basically uh calling out pro passion Java. I showed where Java was like like you know almost like pulling a doggy a little doggy but like he was pulling a lamborghini like that level of like just you know flashing it's just so innate so showy there is no humility in that there, there is absolutely no humility in that and and pride become comes before uh, a fall yo while humility while humility comes before honor yeah like proper pulling a lamborghini like he's pulling a dog and then he does, uh, he's like sitting somewhere, another, I think it's within the same short that I watched. I would recommend, guys, whenever I recommend people to go and check out, please check them out because my audience largely listens to a lot of rubbish, okay? So when I mention people, please take notes. Like I mentioned Alan Parr in this video, I mentioned Brian Riggs, I mentioned Mike Winger, I mentioned uh ellen uh, did, did i say ellen Parr? i mentioned all things theology kdb true i mentioned these people take them down and start watching these channels because right now you're listening to tranketty and prophet lovey right now you are listening to all of these other randos so please go watch this guy well all things theology all right all things theology that is his handle and he has got a yellow little image profile picture all things theology okay yeah i uh, yeah a yellow profile pic that's how you will be able to identify just in case there's like more than one all things theology type establishment thing anyway in the, the short that he he did on youtube th another thing that prophet java did passion java whatever <laughs> was as he's standing being interviewed there he's like in the black no no not in the black community per se but like he's uh, he might as well have said in the black community and i'll i'll explain to you why just now he's like there are all these I don't know what's going on with you guys walking around because in the black community it's 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 populated it's filled by all of these <laughs> all of these broke and i'm not gonna say the word <laughs> i laughed i couldn't help but laugh but i was out of my mind shocked that 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 kind of 
coarse jesting that unseasoned speech came out of his mouth. And he proudly shared that with his audience. It wasn't edited out. He called them the N-word. He was like, the black community is just filled with all of these broke N-words. <laughs> the expose on passion java because i was like this dude is worse than prophet Lovi. <laughs> but you see south africa these are your pastors this is who you go to church to on sundays these are the people that you are listening to people that are doing a video on youtube talking about how it is that in the black media it's filled with black n-words sorry with broke n-words with a whole bunch of broke n-words like he's doing a rap video <laughs> <laughs> a pasta guys <laughs> he's so arrogant he is so arrogant and these are who you are following the letter to the church at Thyatira was indeed speaking to Thyatira but these things can also be metaphorically applied to modern day churches in South Africa you are very similar to Thyatira and these men and women are like the prophetess Jezebel she calls herself a prophetess just like prophet Lovi calls himself a prophet just like Java calls himself a prophet, Tranquility calls himself a, a prophet, Bushiri calls himself a prophet. All these random dudes with all of these magic powers that call themselves Baba, they call themselves prophets. Do you understand? There are women as well who are like this, mm, who then I guess can be called prophetesses because they're female um, type setup thing. But they are the ones that are inspiring you to eat food sacrificed to idols, to partake in sexual immorality. You're tolerating them. You're therefore being bewitchable. And as a result, it is causing Karabo to get afflicted by a whole bunch of satanists that thoroughly bashing their chest their chest on a mountaintop like king kong think they can get to me when i've been in gagaram bokoto all this time to conquer the kinema darkness i've been single-handedly fervently fighting against the kinema darkness and i have survived i don't know how many deaths curses I, I have survived i don't know how many death spells that have been cast on me time and time again the devil has been trying to get me to commit suicide because god will not allow him to put an ailment in my body he would like they've tried to kill me with cancer i've had somebody i've had a cousin try to uh, send me a, a cancer curse a health curse right um i've i've seen die in your sleep curses all that jazz essentially just natural causes like this woman must not wake up on monday morning or whatever types of thing they haven't worked so now they are relying very heavily on suicide they hope to induce suicide in my bones frustrating me to oblivion and oftentimes the suicide curses come after i reject some kind of advance by occult suggestion i reject a a, a a call to embrace occult magic because i'm using apparently allegedly my spiritual gifting for mahala i'm wasting time on jesus all that jazz uh or men that are trying to be with me gangani uh take what i have to give you or else you know very very threatening intimidating ultimatumy type random suggestions that are very below the belt under the table and just nasty yeah type establishment thing i've had that go on on a loop for a decade and they keep coming at me precisely because i meet new ones fresh ones out of the woodworks do they pop out every so often like a hookworm in the body you don't even know how it got there like a, a flesh-eating bacteria necrotizing fasciitis or a uh a, 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 what is this a flesh-eating amoeba that that comes inside your your nostril because you went swimming in an infested river or whatever or e coli that comes in and gives you cholera because like i said you were swimming at a strange river or whatever yeah they come in like that and then when the lord just rises it in my body and refuses to let me die because the disciples will eat poison and it will not kill them they then get puzzled shocked out of their minds as to what's going on and every so often they give up but guess what i keep meeting new ones i keep meeting brand spanking new flesh flesh eating bacteria necrotizing fasciitis in these streets i keep meeting uh, a flesh eating amoeba a brain eating amoeba i keep swimming in these murky occult waters where it is that they have just dunked me in their seances and put me in the center of their attempts at my life and like i said they then in in in, in jest or in you know uh what is the word i'm like a syringe uh, inject they then inject a brain eating amoeba uh, uh into my brain they've tried to take my mind away they inject a flesh eating bacteria into my finger they inject um like uh, some catastrophic 
parasite in my body that is supposed to eat me from the inside out and then it just like i said fizzles off and dies inside my body because my body inside is like made of hydrochloric acid or something where it is that natural organisms living organisms of a certain kind just can't survive and then they get shocked they, they literally get you know they get blasted backward oh they get a uh, a backed mm -hmm. upon getting a backed like thrown a back you know otherwise known as a backed yeah upon getting a backed you guys they go back to the drink board over and over and over and over and then some of them just fall off the bandwagon they let go they move on they're like i guys, she's not worth my time plus i don't know her but every so often there is one that just kind of lingers there is one that just kind of sticks around because and then they keep on pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing and it is these people that are going to get ended it is these ones that keep on pushing something that they cannot succeed to achieve that are going to get killed and i am trying to salvage these randos from the flames of hell letting them know that don't look at me and imagine that i'm one of those gullible randos chilling in java's church i'm not i'm not i have not been swayed to and fro by every wind of doctrine i have not gathered for myself java for a teacher to teach me what my uncomfortably itchy ears want to hear I am not chilling in destructive heresies and destructive uh, and, and doctrines of demons. I have not departed from the faith. I have not given heed to seducing spirits, seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. I have not given heed to anathema. I am a cut above the rest. I am on a narrow road that leads to life that few people found. Find. I've counted the cost of being a disciple. I'm actually truly born again. So you cannot imagine that you're going to get out of me the same reaction to sorcery that you got for from someone chilling under Java. Adieu trickling a tear down their eye for crying out loud when this dude is speaking smack at the pulpit i'm not that girl i have sutured myself to christ and so for those reasons <laughs> i cannot be moved i'm like mount zion which stands forever and cannot be shaken i really truly truly can't be moved you guys but guess who eventually gets moved you you know that scripture touch not god's anointed do my prophets no harm people have ransacked it out of context they have butchered it and a lot of these random charlatans love to use it when indeed apologists in the faith rightfully dividing the word of god men call them out they're like touch not god's anointed do the prophets of god no harm because they don't want to get called out for their fakeness yeah they don't get to lay claim to that scripture the reality of it is that it applies to people like me it applies to people like true saints who are on the narrow road. They are the ones that you ought not touch. They are the ones that you ought not harm. Because they are the ones that when then they have warned and warned time and time again, trying to snatch you even from the flames of hell and you do not heed. You then find yourself suddenly waking up in torments like the rich man in eternal fire. Because you suddenly got into a car accident. Or just like the heart attack you've been trying to induce inside Garabo, you are the one that got it. The woman was, in, was, was exasperated. She was tired. And at the time of your death, she was praying for your redemption. She was doing this video, trying to perhaps maybe if she couldn't convince you in yesterday's message, she might get to you today. But it turns out that I'm going to be killing a man. Put a gun against his head, pull the trigger, now he's dead. Unbeknownst to myself, because my intention was not to kill a man. You see, what kills you is your rebellion against God and your persistence on taking that which does not belong to you. When a Christian is trying to snatch you out from the flames of hell and you try to stab them, sometimes God ends you. That believers first price is not for your death god does not delight in the death of him who dieth but you sometimes get killed anyway because the lord reached the end of himself in giving you grace for your particular unique individual circumstance the lord is going to end the lives of these randos and thyatiran conglomerate those of you who are like the church at thyatira you are responsible for the mutiny against the body of Christ. You are responsible for exhausting us like this, for exasperating us like this. You have caused all of these Jezebels all over the show that are about to be thrown into a sick bed. All this pomp you have given Tranquility, all this arrogance. You've given these licentious men in the occult that are insistent on having a woman. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, that does not belong to them. Mm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Dangani, you are the reason. Why they won't repent because they've been spoiled literally for years by your la di da lukewarm disposition, your complacency, your being swayed to and from by every wind of doctrine. This very thing that you have been doing, where it is that you've been calling them papa and saying prophesy, papa, prophesy for years when they you they are flagrantly, obviously, if at all you were to rightly divide the word of God, fake. If at all you were to measure them by their fruit, you would discover that they're fake, they're posers. That's what's good. Yeah. But because you have not called them out for what they are, because they have not manifested demons when they walk into your churches, given that you're so consecrated to God, because you have been also able to just do church for years on end among tears that are not manifesting demons, that's what's good. 
these people feel like they can totally get to someone that's been dropping, ping, ping, dra, 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 dra. Somebody that's been ravazering them, dumparing them. Somebody that has been conquering them for years. They think they can finally get to us because like I said, they think we're a tough stain. They don't think we're an impossible feat because that's exactly what we are. They just think we're a tough stain. It's written in God's word that the gates of Hades will not prevail against the church. Indeed, it is absolutely true that God Almighty might indeed end a Christian's life through martyrdom in that people can succeed to kill Christians. But understand also this, that if it is not God's will that the Christian should die a martyr's death, but rather to conquer her enemies, that's when you're in danger. Sometimes God allows a beheading by ISIS. Sometimes God allows a woman to get burned in Nigeria for rejecting a Muslim man. Sometimes the Lord allows a woman to get kidnapped and then killed for evangelizing on the side of the street. And yet again, Nigeria, it's a, it's a silly country there to live as a Christian. Do you understand what I'm saying? Sometimes Christians do get killed. A lot of times they do get killed. There are many of our fathers who got killed. Go read Fox's book of martyrs, okay? Yeah, martyrdom can happen. But if the Lord has not seen it fit to cause martyrdom, if it is not God's will that his saints should go home through martyrdom, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. If God does not want to bring a saint home that way, if it is, in his, int if it is his intention to rather cause either like a little mini revival through them or for them to survive a feat, conquer, for them to, yeah, you get my point, knock some dominoes down rather instead, it is going to then be those who attempt to kill the Christian that die. And seeing as with each and every single Christian that is very strong, in Bogoto, in Gagara, all up in your grill. Yeah, seeing as you, you don't know who you're dealing with. You don't know if you're dealing with a martyr here that you're going to succeed to kill versus someone that has been set apart to survive you because they are going to be the one bringing home 200 skins or four skins of the Philistines because he's David. Seeing as you don't know if you're dealing with David or Stephen, seeing as you don't know which of those two you're dealing with, you do best to just walk away from a Christian and stop persecuting them. You do best. Because if you're dealing with David, you're going to be, like I said, your foreskin is going to be collected because you're one of the 200 or 400 Philistines or whatever. Yeah. But if you are dealing with Stephen, you're going to stone a Christian to death only for you to be condemned for persecuting the body of Christ later when you do finally pass away. Either way, it does not end well for you. But the first creates a delusion for a season where it is that you conquer, you prosper to make a Christian disappear from society only for you to like later on find yourself severely wanting in eternal condemnation. Like I said, either way, it does not end well for you. So in my particular case right now, I am being told apparently, allegedly, that me, I'm dying, no. But I'm not being told that uh, particular, uh, uh, you know, pro prognostication. That particular prognostication, that's what it is. That little premonition of the, uh, of the occult. I'm not being told that by Jesus. I am being told that by the occult. I am being told that this time apparently I've met Ingakara. Ingaki, Ingakara. And guys, unless I expressly understand from the Lord on high that me, I'm going. I'm not going. Plus, top of that, I don't know how many times I have sought the Lord's face to end my life. Like Elijah, I've been so miserable, so depressed, so forlorn, so down, so out, so melancholic that I've asked God to take me in my sleep. I have asked the Lord to kill me. I have thoroughly asked to die. I have. There was a time when I had like a hard knock cough and I didn't want to go to the doctor, but it got so painful that I went because I just wanted to leave. That's how bad my persecution has been. But God has not allowed me to die. He got me given medical attention. I got antibiotics for that cough. He made my body so sore that I could not ride it out. And it would have been like uh, basically just a mockery of God. You know, murder by suicide. Like self-murder by, 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 can you suicide by negligence? Suicide by negligence type, type setup thing. I got the necessary medical attention that I needed. And that medical attention even came through because I was coughing so badly that my mom is the one that insisted I go see a doctor. Otherwise, I was just going to let it happen. Right? But it was painful. I probably would have asked for help anyway. Yeah. Type establishment thing. I'm trying to help you understand that I've been on a, a pretty much a, de a deathbed, a terminal illness for a decade. I've wanted to go home for 10 years and the whole time God has kept me alive. One thing that I have already had, that I, I have however sent up to God in prayer, perpetually, when I am being beleaguered on all sides with an extremity of melancholy, is that God, whatever happens, please don't let me end my life. If, if I will go home, I want to go home. You know I want to go home, but not like, I will never ever do that. The Lord, for me, it's like, if you want me, I, I said to him, if you want me home, all these death threats that keep coming at, at me, if you want me home, you will take me. You can. You can give me a brain aneurysm. You can give me a heart attack. You can give me just a ushering into eternity in my sleep. There are many ways you can end me. You can end me in a car accident, a stray bullet, anything can end me. 
bad food, mistaken poisoning, anything can end me without me having to sin against you in my perishing. So I will know that you want me home if I wake up because I've got a heart attack in my sleep. And in years, nothing of that nature has happened. So seeing as this death is yet again another suicide attack, I know it's not from God. Coupled with the fact that I indeed overheard in a dream so a, couple, a bunch of, like some arrogant occult dude on some shut up with now toads. You are going to end up shutting up because I'm going to kill you because he thinks that he's the final destination for Karabo. That even though girl you've survived all these other death curses, I am the King Kong now. I have arrived. I've gotten another death curse coming at me from some strange dude in the occult that feels emasculated by my especially most recent shorts. The ones where I was exposing some pretty licentious men, yeah, they feel like now I need to die. Mm. They have been the ones to put ahead my gravestone on some R.I.P. Sister Gil. Congratulations, you have joined a long line of attempted murderers of my person. But I personally am not going to leave until God takes me out. And from the way that the Lord keeps on hammering down the rapture down my throat, I believe that that way that I'm likely leaving is going to be in the rapture. I am leaving soon. My longing for heaven is going to be fulfilled, but it will not be through a death. It will not be through a suicide. I am not going to end my life. And it will not be the first time that people have tried to get me to go out like that. And it will also not be the first time that some strange brand spanking new witch or cult or bunch of witches have imagined that they've got something up on the last batch. That this time around they're ever so slightly or marginally more poignant than the last ones and so this time they're gonna prosper to get to me yeah a whole bunch of naive people that ultimately get knocked out the way a lot of them just walk away because they realize that they can't get to me but some of them insist and persist and push and it is the ones that are insisting persisting and pushing that are gonna die you can not allow yourself to go to hell after sitting outside so much ministry so much christian content because your your eternity is going to be that much more excruciating it's going to be that much more excruciating. Get born again, guys. That's all I'm getting at. Get saved. Do not compare me to some random Christians that were able to ride out Rima for a whole year. Grace Bible Church for five years, Yonke. Do not look at me and think of me as someone that has gone to a roadshow, Ya Bushir. Or when Prophet Lovi was in South Africa, I bought a ticket because they, they thoroughly sell the gospel because it's there as a means of financial gain. I'm, that, I'm not that girl. I'm not that girl. You're not going to watch me streaming on some city dude on YouTube as you're praying in tans on, on, on YouTube, confusing people unawares to us all what he's saying. And yet you must just join in. I'm not, you're not going to find me watching that video on YouTube. I'm not that girl. I rightly divide the word of truth. I belong to the kingdom of heaven. I might be isolated. I might be in solitude like Micaiah being fed meager portions of bread and water. But I have only one God. He's in heaven. And he has some rules as to how to, to conduct myself as a Christian, even in my ministry. And for as long as I follow him, Balaam's era, dream on, you cannot curse me for I am far too blessed. I am far too blessed. In Psalm 1 it is written that the man who is blessed is the one who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. But whose delight is in the law of the Lord and on his law he meditates day and night. He's like a tree planted by streams of water that yields his fruit in a season and whose leaf does not wither. And in all that he does, he prospers. This here is true prosperity. Truly, truly being prosperous is holding fast to Jesus Christ in righteousness, in piety, avoiding wickedness and not standing in its way. That's true piety. That's true godliness and that's true prosperity and I got it and you cannot take that away from me. Do not look at my poverty, my squalor, my impoverishment, the fact that I ain't got no jack, nothing, no jill, no bag of chips, nothing. Yeah, the Lord did say that would happen. In this world, you'll have much trouble take out of overcome the world. Blessed are you when you are persecuted, when you are poor, which I am, you are rich, okay? My treasures are in heaven where moth and rust are not destroyed and thieves don't come in and steal. So the utilization of my poverty as some kind of a weapon against me is futile for someone who has studied to show themselves approved, has counted the cost of being a disciple and who gauges thoroughly that she cannot be shaken. She's like Mount Zion who endures forever because she is in the Lord. For real, I've built my house upon the rock and not the sand. So nothing can beat me down i therefore trample serpents and scorpions underfoot and over all the power of the enemy and until such time that the lord has seen it fit to call my card my number and takes me home through a heart attack a car accident or a bombing i am not leaving in a suicide you can literally dream on i fear god too much so try another strategy or get saved because if you do not move out the way this time around this here is thoroughly accurate 
touch not God's anointed. Do his prophets no harm. I'm one of them. For real. Don't say I didn't warn you. I'm signing out in Christ's name, Crank K. Peace.